Well, I'm really looking forward to today doing the new top 10. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna look at my previous top 10 and I'm gonna talk through those. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set, show you the releases that have been since I made that top 10. So in February of this year, I made this top 10 here. I'm gonna talk you through the changes based on what's been released since. Anything other than Supernet number one would be a surprise. Yeah, but that's the interesting thing. We still don't actually have the A5X2 and these are all tablets that I've actually used. So if I haven't used a tablet, it's not in the list. It's not for consideration because this is my top 10 as I see it right now, mainly for what I think is working for most people. It's not just for me. This is the top 10 for most people. Obviously, this is the remarkable Paper Pro here. and There's been a lot of interest in this recently and my thoughts on it have kind of matured since the last time I did a live stream and my first thoughts video on it so let's talk about that briefly first they're a little bit further along as I say and I've been using it as my planner and yeah it is managing to do everything I need it to do as a kind of daily planner although it's been a little bit jarring going back to my workflow actually annotating on a PDF so here's my little workflow here it's got my my timetable it's got what I'm up to day in, day out. So you see, I also have the tool bits of work that I'm doing. One thing I really like is the two finger swipe off to the side and that's new since I daily drove a Remarkable. So you can always get yourself a bit of extra space around a PDF by two finger swiping off to the side. I think that's quite cool. So just a bit of notes there. That's a really nice thing to have. So it's a little bit jarring that I can't work in the OneNote system that I've been using recently on books tablets and on the vwoods so there we are i have really enjoyed drawing on it so far let me show you something that i did recently so you might recognize this gentleman here it should give you a bit of an impression of how long it takes to load a big file like that and yeah that was quite pleasant that was quite an enjoyable thing to do there and uh, you know for bright colors i thought that was quite suitable there and this will be featuring in my full sort of drawing review if you like my my look at it as a drawing tablet and then just the other day i really enjoyed going to liveton which is a national trust place near me i seem to have scrolled down there we are and did this little drawing there although what i would what i did find there is when i got to a certain number of layers i was adding in detail to this building and the detail wasn't really showing up so that was a bit of a surprise but stay tuned to this and the, the drawing tools they are really a plus and yeah absolutely when i draw, when I do that drawing video, you'll get some 4K 120 footage of the of the pen on the on the screen. So you'll really see it coming to life there, I hope. So the drawing will be in detail and talk loads about that. I've got an extra one now. Uh, Remarkable have kindly sent me one, which is really good of them. I've also got, incidentally, I've got the type folio coming in, which I bought and the marker plus, they call it. And I'm going to go ahead and review those as part of my full review as well. But what I've done is I actually lent the spare one, the second one, if you like, sent by Remarkable to my mother. And I've said, well, see how you get along with it. Cause my mum is an artist herself. She was an art teacher and she's been drawing my dad here. Look. And there's some really nice things there um, as well. This is Bob here. Uh, <laughs> and uh, she's been really enjoying it. And she agrees that the pen tools are very nice. And, you know, for this, draw, draw my children. You can't, you know, looking at this, you're not, you're not thinking, oh gosh, look at the quality of those lines are a bit wobbly. There's once or twice maybe there, but she's clearly enjoying that as well. We're getting to grips with the marker with a pen on paper. So drawing, yeah, I'm still really enjoying it. What we're actually covering is what are the changes so far to this top 10. But honestly though, I don't actually think they've got a classic here. I don't think that this is their classic design. I think this is an interesting design. I think they've done this. I think they'll be back with a Remarkable 3. I'm certain they will make a Remarkable 3 really and go back to a bit more safe, really. I'm a bit surprised in a way they did this. I think the Remarkable 2 is their classic design. We will be looking back at the Remarkable 2 and thinking, yeah, that was on point in terms of design. It's a nice design, there's some good things here, but I think personally, the, the things that they're, the sort of compromises they've made to make this a color, and did you notice I turned the front light on there? <laughs> it didn't change much, did it? To make this a color ink tablet. And I'll talk about those a little bit as we go on as well. I really don't enjoy the yellow uh, staining when you sort of resize things. Let's see if I can get that going on the screen here. Yeah, if I move things around, you see that yellow staining there? 
And the fact that they haven't given me an option just to wherever I like to manually refresh. See now that, that screen is covered in this horrible yellow staining. Can you see that? Now I'd forgive that because that's an inherent limitation of the Gallery 3. I'd forgive that if they just recognized that and said, all right, well it does yellow staining, so they need a gesture to full refresh the screen. I mean, why wouldn't you? So they haven't. <laughs> Somebody recognises it, that's awesome. Um, good, really, you know, what amazing people to spend some time with. Just give us some annual refresh and we can get rid of that, and I'd forgive that e easily. But I think we'll see next autumn, I think we'll see a Remarkable 3, and I think that will still sell like hotcakes, and, and it probably should still sell like hotcakes. It should still be an amazing device. And I think for note-taking, for many of you, black and white will be absolutely enough. Okay, so. Since February uh, 2024, and the nice thing about this is you're going to get a bit of a demonstration of actually moving the content around on the page as well, and that's the sort of intention. So you'll get to see a real world kind of, because one of the things I like doing with this is being able to move content around. So the next thing that came out after February 2024 was the Big Me Inknote X, okay? Now, I was pretty pleasantly surprised about the Big Me Ink Note X. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did, and I think Big Me are doing quite good things with the refresh, with the color ink screen, and it had lots of power. It kind of reminded me of their, it was their answer to the Tab Ultra C Pro for me. It had a good, powerful processor, it had a good screen. I really quite liked it. So where I'm gonna put it is actually in front of the Tab Ultra C Pro. It actually, no, pardon me. <laughs> just behind the Tab Ultra C Pro, in front of the Books Tab X. So that's where, for me, the Big Me Ink Note X should go in this list after it came out. So I'm gonna remove the Ink Note light, it's gonna fall off the bottom. So I just cut that out there, snip that out. You see, it's quite nice the way you, with digital paper, you can move things around that you've written really quite easily. And this lot are getting slide, uh, slided up. These ones are getting slid up a little bit. There we are that way there. Okay, so we've, we've got this far and the Big Me Ink Now X is gonna go into there. Cool, so that was my first sort of change that I wanted to do here. Okay, now next to come out was the Go 10.3. The Books Go 10.3. And what a great tablet that is. Okay, and it was then and it still is now. Really thin and light, absolutely brilliant. And I think for most people, you know what? It was, it was the one to recommend. It was all that Remarkable did well in terms of the thin, light build. Had a great pen. He had the 300 DPI, okay, Carter 1200, but still really, really good. Fabulous contrast, really low screen to ink distance. Sure, there were some improvements that, that we could want from it, but we'll talk about them in the buying guide later. And honestly, that should and, and did go for me right to the very front. The books go 10.3, great device. So gone was the Kobo Ellipsa 2E. Hopefully this is useful. It's, it's interesting. Is it interesting to see it all? So the way you can move it around on the screen as well. I'll switch it to manual focus for a little while. The books go 10.3 went in right to the very top. Absolutely. I, I think that's a brilliant device. It's not saying that's necessarily the one that I would choose if I was buying one of these devices, but I think honestly that was right there at the very, very top. That was a brilliant device, is a brilliant device still. We'll see where that ends up after all of these changes. And then next in the list was released the V Woods. Now, okay, it's still about to come out of its Kickstarter. But, you know, that's a really solid first go, first entry. All of a sudden, we've got Carter 1300, brilliant screen, even thinner than the Books Go 10.3. And when you pick that thing up, every time I pick it up, I'm like, wow, okay, that feels like a paper tablet. That feels like, it's so thin and light, everybody, it really is. It's, yeah, I'm gonna talk a bit more detail about it, but it is incredibly thin and light. And, you know, it just feels like a really thin little notebook there. So great device. Where do I think that goes? It's still developing the software really there. I honestly think that for what it is right now, I would probably put it just behind the books, Tab Ultra C Pro there. 
put it probably better than the Big Me Ink note because actually the software is pretty well considered. And what they did was they listened to what people didn't like about other devices and they delivered on those things. And so I think that's really quite good. Solid start from them, lots to love about that device. And I think it's going to be really quite good. So now gone was the Remarkable 2 from our top 10. Bind and move everything else up. Now we have, there we go. The V Woods sliding in there at number four. So brilliant list so far. And now we have the big release, the excitement of the Remarkable Paper Pro. I'm just gonna call this Remarkable Pro forevermore. I think that's what we'll end up remembering it as, Remarkable Pro. We'll have the Remarkable 2, we'll have the Remarkable 3, we'll have the Remarkable Pro. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll second that, yeah. Isn't it good the way you can move this thing around? Delightful to use on a screen like this, really, really is good. So where did I think that went? Well, for me, as I say, it's not the out and out classic that it might well have been. I think that it, there's a lot to love in it. The, de the device, if you are wanting a device which is delightfully designed, it is really nice. There's no creakiness to it. There's, you know, the edges are lovely, the pen, everything is very well considered. We'll talk more about it as we go forward. I think it, again, is gonna sneak in there in front of the V Woods. It is the device, I would pick that for most people, just, you know, it's limited in terms of what you can do. It is a note-taking device. So gone is the A5X. I know, it's been managed to hang on for all this time, that and the Remarkable 2, but now I think we've got to knock them off the top 10 and the Remarkable Pro goes in there right now. I'm gonna delete that arrow first. Can you see the yellow smear in though, guys? <laughs> oh, it's not pleasant when that happens there. The Remarkable Pro, in it goes, just there. And uh, I think that's right. I, I, I mean, you know, argue with me, absolutely. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, you, you 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 hit it. Yeah, interesting. The really really interesting thing there with that flash. I think that's distracting personally. Uh, interesting. Yeah, the pen nib wear not. It's not too bad. I mean, it's, it wears almost like a pencil, but it, you know, it takes a lot longer, obviously, to wear down the pencil. But it wears that kind of shape. I wonder if the yellow stains are fixable. No, I think that that is unfortunately that is a limitation of the the hardware. And we've got the fastest driver in here. We think the T two thousand or the latest and greatest that Skynet have to offer, part of me e ink have to offer. It's not necessarily a problem, but as I said in my last videos, what they should do is give us a color that doesn't need, give us some options of colors that don't need to flash when they are rendered. And that way we would have the ability to do at least some color without that. Just give us a manual refresh to get rid of it. Jeffrey Moss obviously made a point only to recommend people who have the funds need an A4 size PDF, preferably color. Exactly my use case and for that is perfect. Yeah, because once it is refreshed, then it's it looks really good, you know? It does look really good. Now, see, what about this one? Yeah, I planned something. I think I know, I think I know where it's gonna go, but I don't wanna sort of preempt that. I know a lot about it. I know what I'm gonna love about it. I'm gonna love the software. It might well be if you were waiting for Remarkable 3 and you're thinking, no, this isn't Remarkable 3. I don't want this. I don't want the color. I don't want the flashing all those things we've discussed, then maybe A5X2 is something that you could actually go for. It could be amazing. It could be the one, it, it's gonna be in the top 10. If it's just, you know, if it just does an updated version of the A5X itself, then it would be, it would be in the top 10. But let's see, Amanda gives a nice answer about why books can be seen as better than Remarkable. It's not necessarily better, it's about better for, for anyone. So yeah, let me know what you think about any and all of that. So what do you all think of that order? I think maybe I was a little bit harsh on the Nomad where I put that, but I think just because of its size, it probably does deserve to go there. Let me know in the comments, but remember, we are only talking about e-ink tablets here, so let's keep it nice. And go ahead and click through to my channel homepage and you'll find lots of in-depth content on all of these tablets here.